GMGM, thank you for listening. My name is Josh Gordon, I'm your host, and I'm about to do a crypto weekly recap. I'm calling in from sunny, sunny Portland, Oregon, and you're somewhere in the metaverse. Now, I wanna speed run through today's episode. We're gonna talk about a couple important announcements this week from the crypto world. One, Tesla sells its Bitcoin. Two, Minecraft bans NFTs. And three, Polygon makes some major announcements. Let's dive in. With the first news story of the week, it was crazy. Tesla sold 75% of their Bitcoin. Now, why is this important? Well, at the beginning of the 2021 bull run, companies putting crypto assets on their balance sheet was a major catalyst. And now we're seeing some of those major companies take a step back and back off of crypto. Now, Tesla sold $936 million worth of Bitcoin in the second quarter, and the price of Bitcoin subsequently fell almost 2% after the announcement, but it regained some of its losses after Musk said that Tesla was open to boosting its Bitcoin exposure in the future. So they didn't say they're done with Bitcoin forever. They still do hold 25% of their Bitcoin, but they did sell so that they could maximize their cash position. Musk went on to say that given the uncertainty of the COVID lockdowns in China, that they were going to maximize cash and get out of some risky assets like crypto. Now he did add that Tesla is open to boosting its Bitcoin exposure in the future and that this should not be taken as a verdict against Bitcoin. He also went on to say that Tesla did not sell any of its Dogecoin. So when you want to maximize cash, I guess you make decisions. I don't know if I understand this one, keeping the Dogecoin and selling the Bitcoin, but he's going to do what he wants to do. Now, Tesla did end the second quarter with $218 million in Bitcoin remaining, down from the original $1.26 billion. And we can look at some of his tweets courtesy of The Milk Road, and I think it's kind of funny. He said, Bitcoin is my safe word. Tesla will not be selling any Bitcoin. He even went on to say that Bitcoin paid to Tesla. He retained his Bitcoin and not converted into fiat currency. Tesla has diamond hands. Obviously, we're seeing that the tweets are just tweets and they are not truth. So sad to see they're selling some Bitcoin, but those are the facts and that's the story for now. We'll see if they buy back in. Story number two, Minecraft bans NFTs. Now this is really interesting and as I did some research for this, I have a lot to share. So Microsoft actually owns video game creator Minecraft and they banned NFTs in their game. So they said to ensure that Minecraft players have a safe and inclusive experience, blockchain tech is not going to be permitted inside our client and server applications, nor may Minecraft in-game content such as worlds, skins, items, and other mods utilize blockchain tech like NFTs. So the reasons that they said they don't like NFTs are they're not inclusive of all our community and they create a scenario of haves and have nots. And they take away the focus from playing the game and they encourage profiteering, which is inconsistent with the long-term joy and success of our players. So, you know, we see some really interesting reactions from the community. And one that I want to call out is by Jiho. He's one of the co-founders of Axie Infinity and super embedded into Web3 gaming and culture. He thinks this doesn't make sense necessarily. And he said this is a big sign of adoption. Just like banning books makes them more popular, so too will the Web2 backlash against NFTs pave the way for viral growth. And in his thread, he went on to say that this is rooted in a, in a belief that games are only about fun, but games are becoming about way more. Games are increasingly starting to mirror or surpass the physical reality in terms of our ability to express ourselves, make friends, and participate in economies. So when Minecraft says that this isn't going to lead to more fun, this isn't going to make a better gaming experience, we have to think about what is gaming in the future? And Jiho makes a compelling argument that gaming in the future is about making friends online, participating in digital economies, expressing yourself to how you want. So when you think about the realm of the possible, are players able to express themselves in better ways when they can only interact and buy digital goods from game creators in the closed system? Or is it when they're able to engage with the community of creators and developers all around the world and participate in you know, sub games and buy assets that really speak to them that they can use in the broader gaming environment? So I think it's the latter. And Chris Dixon went on to say something interesting too, which was, this is a good reminder of why you shouldn't build on corporate owned Web2 networks. They change the rules on developers on a whim. So, you know, essentially open source versus closed source. And when NFTs are open source, they're composable, you can build on top of them and you minimize some of this platform risk. Like Minecraft changes the rules, 
it affects everybody. And that's actually the Ethereum origin story. And so I have this tweet here from an interview with Vitalik and he discusses why he created Ethereum in the first place. He says, I was happily playing World of Warcraft during like 2007 to 2010, and one day Blizzard removed the damage component from my beloved Warlock's Siphon Life spell. I cried myself to sleep, and that day I realized what horrors centralized services can bring. I soon decided to quit. And he went on to create Ethereum. I mean, that's a pretty extreme example of a reaction to someone getting their video game changed on them, but it's super cool. And so, you know, I think how a world a lot of people see for gaming is it's expansive and it's not limited to centralized decision makers. So sad to see Minecraft banning NFTs. And I got one more thing to say on the topic. When you think about Microsoft and their origin, I went and did some research on what their stance is on open source technology. And now it's very different than what it used to be, but that's an important thing to note. It used to be different. And so in 2001, the Windows chief, Jim Alchin, had stated, open source is an intellectual property destroyer. I can't imagine something that could be worse than this for the software business and the intellectual property business. And I think today it's really commonly understood that open source is king when it comes to technology. That's how you get builders to build all over the world on it. It's how we can enable people to participate in digital creation and co-development. So even today, we're seeing a very big shift in open source technology from Microsoft to back then. And I think we're going to see that same shift in video games in the future to play people like now with Minecraft stating their ban today. Story number three, let's talk about the Polygon ZK EVM. Sounds super technical. It's because it is, but let's talk about it in simple terms because otherwise I'm going to get confused too. So ZK EVM stands for Zero Knowledge Ethereum Virtual Machine. And this is all about scalability, increasing speed and reducing cost. So this announcement is a layer two scaling solution that uses zero knowledge proofs and that it inherits Ethereum's security. So in the announcement, Polygon gave some definitions, which I found very helpful. EVM equivalence means any smart contract or dev tool that can use Ethereum can be used on Polygon, period. Now they said that it's just like using Ethereum, but with this groundbreaking scaling power of ZK tech. A good way of thinking about this is ZK L2, which is Polygon ZK EVM. It rolls up a batch of transactions and uses a zero knowledge proof to validate those transactions on Ethereum. So essentially it takes like 10 transactions, rolls them up as one, and it gets processed on like a single Ethereum transaction or block. I, I don't know how to technically describe it any better than that, but it's taking a bunch of transactions and rolling them up so that it can process it at once. Ultimately, one transaction replaces many, which increases throughput, savings on fees, and it reduces latency, so all good things. I hear a lot about zero knowledge proofs, so it'll be cool to see how people start implementing this in the months and years to come. Uh, I know that Unstoppable's thinking a lot about zero knowledge proofs, as are many companies, so overall, a good thing for the ecosystem. All right, let's talk about some Unstoppable Domains news. First of all, we announced our partnership with MoonPay. This is massive. You can go on MoonPay and buy your crypto and use your Unstoppable NFT domain so that it sends that crypto to your domain and its associated address, and you don't have to copy and paste your long and complicated wallet address. You can just type in josh.nft or whatever your domain is. And you can even use this in all of MoonPay's integrated applications. So this is awesome for the ecosystem. The second unstoppable news story I want to share is this week, we released a podcast episode that I loved, The Future of Decentralized Identity and Reputation with Scott Commoners from A16Z Crypto. Me and Scott chopped it up for a good hour, all about identity and reputation. Super interesting. Scott, really loved the episode. Give it a stream on Apple, Spotify, YouTube, wherever you listen to podcasts. Community member of the week, I want to give a shout out to No Breaks X. Huge Unstoppable UD fam member. He owns 13 three-digit domains. I think that's awesome. Shout out to you, man. For the NFT project of the week, I want to call out CUF. So CUF stands for the Chicago Underground Film Festival. And I think what they're doing is really interesting. Basically, they're the longest running underground film festival in the world, running for 29 straight years, and they're converting to a DAO. They have this massive community uh, where people have been participating and really engaged and involved for years. The underground indie film festival community is a tight knit one, and they're now going to be transitioning some of their decision making and leadership over to a DAO by giving the DAO opportunities to participate in votes from what movies they film to how things are run. So very interesting experiment they're running and they're minting an unstoppable domain at their next film festival. So I want to give them a shout out and excited to see how it goes.
That's it for this week. I hope you enjoyed the Crypto Weekly recap. I'm doing these recaps every single Friday covering news stories that I think are really impactful. If you enjoyed it, please give me a retweet and share if this is on Twitter. Give it a like on YouTube. And with that, hop into my DMs if you have any questions. Love talking crypto and NFTs. And with that, I'll see you next Friday. Have fun in the metaverse. Stay safe. Peace out.